Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers, and this is... Pat O. Pat O, how was your weekend? Um, before before we get to that, I want to address the elephant in the room here. Uh-oh. And um, let me start off by saying that when I was, uh, when I was growing up, uh, I was... I watched a lot of Wheel of Fortune. My mom watched a lot of Wheel of Fortune. Are you familiar with that show? Yes. I, I I have am, to... I'm old enough for Wheel of Fortune. Okay. And I thought that Pat Sajak and Vanna White were married. Okay. Just because they were on TV together every night. And right. and that was just, that's just something that I thought. And eventually, like I said, I spoke those words aloud and my mom kind of laughed and was like, no, they're just, they're just co-hosts together. And now that uh, I have increased interaction with our listeners, I've realized that a lot of people think that you and I are involved, <laughs> or oh. at least at least trying to like pump me for info uh, <laughs> about you and like make comments and shit. And I would just I just got to say that I uh, that would be amazing. Um, unfortunately, I'm married, and even more so. And you're you're involved, and we're both involved, and. Um, there's also a sizable age difference between us, which comes into play a lot. And this is kind of what I'm getting to with this. And it's something that you just alluded to. A lot of my cultural references are lost upon you because I am, you know, I'm 41 and you are in your late, 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 late 20s. Late, 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 late 20s. Well, that's a very nice way to say that I'm 30. Thank you. <laughs> and when you're, when you're, when you try to get involved with someone that with that much of a gulf between your ages, uh, a lot of like cultural shit is lost upon you. Like yeah. I, I dated someone in there that was, you know, a decade or so younger than me. And she didn't know what the fuck I was talking about half the time. Um, I mean, we definitely shared one language in common, but that wasn't enough, you know? And, um, it is on that point, it is on the age difference and is, is the, the cultural differences between us that I have to come to Ashley and say, Ashley, what the fuck is up with your boy, Will Smith? Because <laughs> any listener of the show knows that Ashley is the world's biggest Will Smith fan that I know of. Uh, and I never really pushed her on it because I just chalked up to one of those things where I'm a decade older than her. I don't know what she's talking about. I've never listened to Willennium side to side or however you you know front to back and uh old boy's having a moment ain't he um will smith is is, is going through it um <laughs> you know okay so hold on because Dude, those open marriages it. aren't healthy i've been saying that for a while now oh open relationships God. are fucking tricky business and you gotta watch yourself that's <laughs> check, not... check yourself before you wreck yourself man no you and I both know that that's not true, but... Oh, it's 100% true, you, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> what I can tell you is I have no idea uh, what's going on because I don't, I don't follow celebrity celebrity uh, gossip. I do I, I do adore Will Smith, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I'm a 90s baby, so, I mean, if you grew up in the 90s, like, he was everywhere. He was everywhere. He was the guy on TV. He was the guy in the movies. He was the music. I mean, that was who you had. You had Will Smith. I mean, that was... You know, kind of the thing. When you first just started to, to to discover music, it was fucking Will Smith's Millennium album because it was all over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, um, mine was more Guns and Roses, but I understand. You know, it's like I said, it's a generational thing, and this is one of those like, I guess, <sighs> incidents where the generational divide is very apparent because I just thought he was. I don't know. I didn't think much of him at all. I mean, I knew the Fresh Prince, but yeah. So that's obviously where we at in American history and the decline of Western civilization. If you're using, trying to figure out where this pod, if future civilizations are trying to figure out where this episode of the podcast falls in the slow collapse of Western civilization, it is, uh, we are recording this the day after the Oscars. So it's all anyone's talking about. And it's a paranormal podcast, and we're not going to spend no, a whole no, bunch of time no, no, dwelling no. on that. It's not the day after the Oscars. It's oh, the it's... day after the slap heard around the world. Is, <laughs> is, <laughs> what the fuck are the Oscars? Um, you know, nobody right. watches that shit. Um, but everybody knows about the slap. I mean, if, if we really need to address it, um, you know, as much as I love Will Smith, uh, celebrities anyway, it's not my fucking business what's going on in their personal life. I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those people. I don't feel like I should need to know everything about them. Mm -hmm. um which is why i don't follow them and so regardless of what is going on you know with his wife or his life or between him and chris rock you know i don't care 
um, from my understanding, Chris Rock made a very poor joke about uh, somebody's um, side effects of, 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 a, of a disorder that they have, which is Will Smith's wife, mm. and that he probably shouldn't have made. And then Will Smith got on the stage and slapped the fucking taste out of his mouth. And that shouldn't have happened either. So neither of those things should have ha- ever happened at all, period. I, I can't condone people making fun of somebody with disabilities, and I can't have condone somebody using violence to combat them. So we're kind of i i feel like i have a little bit of a dog in this fight just because i consider us to be performers and um i consider us to be uh entertainers and a lot of things we say sometimes um you know i i just i think when you try to punish somebody either physically or career-wise or in any way for a joke that they make or an off-the-cuff comment that they make while on stage while performing i think that's tricky business and you know i think i i I know how award shows work i don't who knows if chris rock even wrote that line you know there's usually a team of writers that work on this thing he could have been reading off a fucking teleprompter who knows if he knew um jada pinkett's miss medical status i didn't i mean you obviously didn't i don't think any of us really most of us probably didn't know prior to last night if she had you know uh, i think it's i don't even want i'll mispronounce it because i mispronounce everything but you know whatever she has i didn't know maybe he didn't know maybe he thought it was a fashion statement you know it's definitely there's women that wear their hair short so that's not an entirely uncommon thing um but i i I don't know. I think anytime we combat free speech with violence, tasteful or not, you know, um, I think it's kind of like stinking thinking, you know, I'm not saying anybody should be able to say, well, I am. I think that, you know, within reason, if you're not putting others' lives in danger, there's a difference between making a bad joke and yelling fire in a crowded theater. Chris Rock did not yell fire in a crowded theater. His free speech did not infringe upon the rights or safety of anybody else. Therefore, I don't think, you know, he should have been touched at all. And and I think it's even debatable whether or not he knew the full ramifications of what he was saying, if he wasn't aware of her medical history or if, uh, you know, he was just reading off a teleprompter, then I don't know. That's my two cents. The Internet's full of hot takes today. And uh, yeah, especially, you know, involving that particular uh, situation, it probably will be for at least the next week. And uh you know, personally, I, I don't think that you should. I'm I'm one of those people. Um, I, I don't think, I I don't think comedy should be punching down. I don't think that you should. I don't think you should be allowed to be fucking mean to people and then be like, "Who's oh, a joke, man?" And I, I don't. And and I'm somebody who, within my friend group, we dog on each other. You know, we tease each other a lot. So it's not like it's something that I I'm unfamiliar with or like I'm a prude when it comes to that type of stuff. But like when you have a platform. And you're being unnecessarily mean to people just because you think you can, because you have a platform to do so. I think that you're then being very irresponsible with your platform. But that's me, and that's my personal take. Um, and that's why we talk uh, shit about people before and after the show instead of on the show. So, <laughs> in the privacy of ourselves. <laughs> I don't know if it's pun. I mean, is it punching like? Is it punching down when you're when you're making a joke at a somebody who has a net worth of like a hundred million dollars like are you really punching down like dude they're fucking millionaires they're well millionaires. right they, they got very different problems than P- punching down point. would be making fun of like the coat check boy <laughs> or something like that not that that you know that's a noble profession but i'm just saying like i don't know i think it, i think it's odd and it's it was i didn't want i wasn't watching the the because we had that talk about my weekend uh we did an interview with the horror basement and beyond podcast yesterday yeah and uh which should be premiering um this week the same day that this premieres is that right yeah with uh with jim jam and johnny leroy and uh it was a great time and uh it it kind of overlapped with the beginning of the academy awards so i didn't bother even tuning in and uh, I, I watched the whole thing unfold in real time on Twitter, which is my favorite way to watch historical things happen yeah, <laughs> is <agree>. via Twitter. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the one. That's why people are like, oh, it, I prefer Instagram or I prefer Facebook. And I'm like, no, Twitter has got I, that's the reason I could literally never live without Twitter is because the capability for that. 
you know what I mean, to watch things unfold in real time. And I know you can kind of do that with Facebook, but Facebook doesn't have that wide anonymous net that Twitter does, where you'll start getting news feeds from Australia of like, because that's the footage that everyone watched. Because in America, I guess they, they, they cut, they censored the broadcast. But like Australia and Japan, people actually got to see the entire incident. And if you watch video of the incident, it's from the Australia or Japanese broadcast. It's not from the American broadcast. So, like, that's something that you would only really come across on Twitter. Uh, you wouldn't come across that on Facebook. You know what I mean? Um, and that's kind of why I prefer Twitter. But, yeah, that was so my weekend. Uh, well, I did Gary Khan. It was a lot of fun. Played some D&D. Um, uh, narrowly missed Matthew Lillard, which will become important in a second yeah <laughs> and then uh sunday did the horror and beyond horror basement and beyond podcast we we ashers and i were interviewed by uh jim jam and johnny leroy and that was an awesome time those two dudes were hysterical and we had a good time there and um that's pretty it pretty much it how was your weekend ashers um i also was was around the presence of matthew lillard um because <laughs> i i was at horror hound and i'm you, it's like halyard it, it is straight up hell but it was so weird whenever we we discovered this because it was it was during our interview yesterday and uh and you were at gary con and you're like well that well matthew lillard was here too i was like well how was matthew lillard at two places at once <laughs> but I, I you know and i still don't really quite understand it sounds like he was gary con started thursday night is that what you're saying he was there thursday for the wedding and then he left friday and then um and then was that satine uh, phoenix who's up uh ex adult film performer and uh has a lot of ties in the D D community. She um got married Thursday night at Gary Con and it was open to all attendees. And um Matthew Lillard and what's his name? Joe Maglio from True Blood and stuff. Yeah. They were they were there Thursday night for the opening for the first day of the con and for that. And then they uh Lillard skedaddled over to Ohio to hang out with you. To hang out with me. He knew I was going to be there, so he, he came to hang out with me. Um, that's what I said about <laughs> about Tony Todd. Anyway, yeah, I went to Horror Hound, and um, I only went for Sunday. I didn't go the whole weekend or anything, which is fine. I don't think it was necessary to go the whole weekend, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, you know, as much as I really like to go to the cryptid events and listen to the speakers, I don't give a shit so much to hear the panels at a horror convention. Mm -hmm. Like that part doesn't really excite me much. I just want to go meet the people, talk to them a little bit, buy some shit and leave. Um, right. So, you know, I only went on Sunday, but then the downfall of that was that I also did not want to sit and uh, waste, you know, three to five hours in any one particular line to meet Nev Campbell or Matthew Lillard or Skeet Ulrich or, you know what I mean? Like it just was not that that's not worth it to me. Um, and plus a lot of times I think you have to buy those tickets in advance. Like I, I have friends that do that for whatever reason. They go and they, um, because we have Wizard World that, well, I don't know what it's fucking called now, but like it was, you know, it, conventions that come through Chicago with like celebrities where you can meet them. And I, I know one guy in particular was very much into that whole scene where like his Facebook is like filled with pictures of him standing next to celebrities, like tolerating his presence for 30 seconds, but charging him like $125. Like I can't think of one person that I would really want to pay just to get a picture with when like, you don't have a meaningful interaction with them. They don't know you. They're never going to remember you. You're like person one of 800 that day. Yeah. And it's like, I'm giving you a hundred dollars to get this picture with you. Right. Just so I have something to post on social media. Like, I'll take pictures of my balls and put them on social media and feel better about it, you know? Yeah, I, I didn't like that aspect of it. Um, well, in order to meet, like, those people, you could pay you could pay the extra to do, like, the photo op or whatever. Or, you, you know, you could pay for the early access and still wait in fucking line, but at least get in the line. You couldn't even get in the line. To, I mean, it wasn't even really possible. I mean, you could kind of... Um, meander around and walk around in a circle for your entire fucking day and hope to god that the line opens up and you're right there when it does mm -hmm. um but uh that doesn't sound like fun to me um right. and when or you could also go meet people who have hardly anybody in their line fucking ted Ramey was sitting by himself every fucking time i looked over there and saw, and saw him yeah and i i was i couldn't believe it you know <laughs> so that's I, what i would do i i would i would never like oh you could meet you know uh 
Mark Ruffalo, The Incredible Hulk. It's like, or I could go annoy Chekhov from the original Star Wars. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. no one wants to talk to that dude. You know, I think it's funnier to go fuck with the C listers, you know, because they're kind of just happy. Like, you want to buy a picture or something, and, you know, you'll buy like a $15 picture and they'll sit there and they'll talk to you for 10 minutes, you know? Right, right, right. And so, I mean, that was kind of the situation. But I mean, I met, you know, I met a good amount of people. Um, I was very disappointed because when I was going, I Tony Todd was there and I knew he was there, but I was told he was not going to be there on Sunday. And I was like, well, fuck, man. So, you know, we go and we do our thing. And then about an hour in, fucking Tony Todd's there. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Well, perfect. Um, so, but, you know, you have to pay money to take pictures with these people. And, and I mean, yeah, I could just go meet them. But I want pictures with these people, especially somebody like Tony Todd. I want I want to take a picture. I will pay money to take a picture with Tony Todd. So I ran out of money at that point. All the ATMs at the venue were tapped out. Um, so we had to physically leave, go to a gas station, come back. And by the time we came back, his line was capped. That's what, that's what that text message meant. When I texted you, you couldn't get into his line anymore. They closed it two hours before he was supposed to leave. I'm going to tell you something I tell my wife all the time. You're walking around with an ATM between your legs. All right. So I don't know about this running to a gas station bullshit. You could have fucking generated that cash almost immediately if you were motivated enough. Probably from Ted Ramey. <laughs> You didn't have to go any further than Ted Ramey to make your Tony Todd bucks. <laughs> hey, Ted, you got, you got some cash. Yeah, hey, look, I need, I need $65. He just wasn't. And... Yeah, he wasn't going to do it. No, um, I guess, you know, I, I didn't think to solicit people. Um, I knew I, I had a very limited amount of time, and I didn't care. I just wanted to meet Tony Todd, and it didn't happen. Right. Whatever. Um, so, but, you know, the, the first person I, I stopped and talked to was, was Tom Savini. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, a lot of people it did suck because it was the first person i talked to and he didn't really talk to me much and he Mm -hmm. didn't have like a line there was no line at all to talk to tom savini and it's not like he was incredibly busy and just trying to push people through his line or anything like that he just wasn't very interested in talking so like my thing was like um you know somebody i don't remember who it was i think it was actually jeff craig he just approaches people at, at conventions and stuff and just goes hey i just wanted to meet you and I was like, oh, my God, that's a that's a wonderful icebreaker, because whenever I meet people that I've really wanted to meet for a long time, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm very awkward. Yeah, I, I don't seem like I'm awkward, but I am extremely fucking awkward. And, um, you know, so I was like, I had thought about it and I'm like, what am I going to say to these people when I meet them? And I could just say, hey, I just wanted to meet you. And then uh, then I'm back to awkward again. So I decided to ask everybody that I met if they believed in aliens. And, um, you know, so I, I asked Tom Savini, do you believe in aliens? He said, no. I said, okay, cool. All right, then let's do this picture. I sit down with him. We take our picture and he's like, give your money to the alien over there. I mean, he made a little joke, you know, he wasn't mean or rude or anything, but the amount of people, since I have posted my picture of me and Tom Savini that have come out and said, well, how was he? Because he was an asshole to me is, um, sad. That kind of sucks. I, I hate that. You know, especially because people are fucking paying money for to, to you know for you to give them five minutes of your time. Don't be an asshole to them. Like that is the least you can do. These people have loved the shit out of you, and you're gonna be an asshole. I just don't get that. Yeah. But, you know, that's just me. So then, you know, then I go and speak to Ted Ramey, and and he was the fucking nicest guy in the world. And uh, you know, I I asked him, and and he was like, well, you know, I. I believe aliens exist. I just don't believe they've visited here and whatever. And he was like, why? What do you, do you believe that they exist? And I was like, oh, well, I mean, it's kind of, I was like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of what I do for a living. He's like, oh, what do you do? And I told him I'm an investigator. He's like, oh, do you got a show on TV? Or I was like, oh no, I, I have a podcast. And he's like, oh, that's, that's cool. And then he like starts to kind of go on and explain his stance a little bit more, which I'll spare you the details on. But he actually apologized to me. He's, I'm sorry for taking up all your time. And I was like, I'm so, what? Like, I'm paying, I'm paying you 40 bucks to take a picture with you, dude. And you're going to apologize to me for explaining. I mean, what? Um, and then he, he asked what the podcast was called. He asked for one of my, one of my business cards. I gave it to him. Um, so Ted, if you're listening, um, uh, I'm also DTF. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> But no, he was no, he was a, a wonderful, he was a gentleman. Um, spent a lot of time with him. It was great. Um, my my buddy that was with us, actually the Reverend, um, our good friend the Rev, Reverend Crimson Nicholas, uh, told him that he really appreciated him showing us his tits on TV. So that was great. Um, you know, an Evil Dead. So <laughs> um, that was nice. 
Uh, then we went, like I said, tried to do the Tony Todd thing. That didn't happen. Um, went and stood in Tom Atkins' line instead. Um, Tom Atkins um, was also an asshole to me. And, I, and I, I don't, he really was an asshole to me. And I don't really understand why. Because right before that point, the people that he was talking to before he talked to me, I mean, he was cutting it the fuck up with. Seemed so fucking nice. And then I get up there and I said, oh, I have a question. And I didn't know what protocol was because most of these guys, you have to buy the autograph to get your picture taken with them. It's weird. And, um, you know, so I, I did that and I was I would try not to interrupt them while they were filling out their autograph. Right. Mm -hmm. But I wanted them to know that I wasn't just going to be awkward and weird and that I kind of wanted to talk to him for a minute. So I was like, oh, I have a question. And he, he told me to wait. I'm like, OK. So I did. <laughs> he said, wait. I said, OK. And when he got done signing, he looked at me. He said, what? I, I said do you believe in aliens he said i don't know and i was like oh okay all right then well cool that's an answer you know and i just played it off because i'm I'm good at that part i'm good at bullshit took my picture with them but you can very much see it in my face how very disappointed i was because that was just not a great interaction and i did not understand he was an asshole um but whatever if i'm ever gonna get a picture of tom atkins that was the only time probably because the guy's old as fuck now so there's that um, and then, of course, I, I met Lloyd Kaufman, who I wasn't able to ask um, the alien question because, you know, he saw I've been waiting for three years to buy a copy of Toxic Avenger um, because I wanted it signed by Lloyd Kaufman. And Lloyd is always at these events. So I just knew that, you know, it was going to be a matter of time. I have other trauma movies, uh, but I've waited for this one in particular. Um, but, you know, Lloyd Kaufman takes his time with everybody. And that's yeah that's the kind of guy he is that's fine um you know and i talked to him for a minute and uh he was like well he was like he just asked what do you do so i told him i was like oh well <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm an investigator I investigate anomalous phenomena like bigfoot and aliens and ghosts and and he's and and you know i have a podcast and he's like he's like oh he was like well have you ever seen an alien he asked me before i could ask him and i was like oh well um, I said no, but in 2016, I saw the Mothman, and he wanted to hear about it. I told him, and then he told me a story of his where he was um, very drunk in a hotel room, and he's pretty sure that there was ghosts, and then we started talking about drugs and how great drugs were, and he said that there should be more drugs in the world, and he's right, um, and then he asked if I wanted to distribute my Mothman documentary under trauma, so that was cool, and uh, I don't I don't know about that offer, but he, I mean, he was great. He was great. <laughs> Yeah. I uh, I had I got to meet him twice and he was very cool both times. Every time, yeah. Yeah, and um the second time he didn't remember the first time I met him was when Space Werewolf played a trauma dance and he he did a Q and A with me uh before we showed it and we talked about it and stuff and and it was f three minutes you know what I mean and it was a lot of fun and that was it and then um. The next time I saw him, he was at the music box for something. I think it was Class of Newcomb High 4 Part 1. And uh, he was there, and um, I had him sign my Everything I Know About Filmmaking I Learned from the Toxic Avenger book. Yeah. And I bought some stuff off him, and I said, hey, you know, I, I know you don't remember me, but we met before. One of my short films played at Troma Dance, and you were very cool to me, and I just wanted to thank you. And, you know, you've continued to inspire me in a, a bunch of different ways over the years. Your films when I was younger, your books now that I'm older, and now meeting you and just the way that you're – how generous you are with your time with people. It's your constant source of inspiration for me. And he was like, thanks, man. And he wrote in my book, Space Werewolf is Better Than the Toxic Avenger and Lloyd Kaufman. Oh, I know. I want to fucking cry even like thinking about that because it's not true. But like he like that's fucking Uncle Lloyd. Like he yeah. is, he's he is... the world's biggest. Cheer. And that's what I mean. Like he asked me if I wanted to, you know, distribute the documentary under trauma. And he's 100 percent serious. You oh, know? yeah. You know but you won't is. get you won't get. I mean, you know, their deal. Right? No. Right. They, you, yeah. You, you I mean, I'm not it. saying don't do it. I would. I, I honestly if if I. I, I would do that with I, I try to get into Troma Dance this year. I haven't heard back yet, but like I would give them the rights. I gave them the rights to fucking uh, what was it called? Um, don't pull out. Like I, I think you know if you have the chance to make money with it, make money with it. But I think you know if you're like ah whatever. The guys that did uh, Matt Parker and uh, or Matt Stone and Trey Parker, their first movie, Cannibal the Musical, 
they did a Troman distro deal and they didn't yeah. make fucking anything off it, but they thought, you know what? People will see it now at least. Right. Yeah, otherwise it's going to languish in fucking obscurity somewhere. Yeah. We could find some smaller company to, you know, maybe give us more money for it. But, uh, trauma at least it'll live on in infamy and it has and you know that that's the career choice they made and look it paid off for them right you know right so i i you know a lot of people with the, with the if if you don't know the trauma deal is basically you get almost no money for your film but they will distribute it you'll you'll they'll tr- slap the trauma logo on it they'll let you do a full blu-ray release with a commentary track and everything uh but they're going to keep 99 percent of the money Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think that that's a raw deal, that the exposure isn't worth the lack of cash that you get. It depends on where you're at at the time, how dig of, how deep of a hole you dug yourself as a filmmaker making your movie in the first place. But, but I don't think it's a terrible deal for the, you know, sometimes it works out for people. Well, have and, you seen trauma movies? I mean, <laughs> I know some of them. <laughs> Right, well, especially they're especially what they distro. Like the the stuff they make in house is usually pretty good. The stuff Lloyd Kaufman makes is usually pretty yeah. good. Um, and Astron Six, and there's been some good people that came through there and produced some quality shit. But they have, you know, they they distro a lot of crap too that they just kind of slap their name on and sell the sell the D- uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff off the website or at these conventions, and you know, but it's trauma, right? Movies of the future, you know yeah, what I mean? Right, and I mean, so it's, you know, it's just kind of more of a um, badge of honor than, than anything. And it depends on I how agree. much that, that badge is worth to you. I mean, if you yes. would have told me this two years ago, you know, I I, I probably would have done it. I probably would have been like, oh, yeah, sign me up, you know. Yeah, but you could probably that. get an Amazon. And now there's so many yeah. streaming services and right. shit. Like, yeah, you can get your cash that way. Right, 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 right. So. And so, I mean, you know, I don't, you know, am, am I going to am I gonna give him my baby? Probably not. But would I make something for him and, and let him distribute? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah now that i know that i can yeah i would <laughs> not to n- not to uh kind of hide i know you're talking about your weekend but i found out that uh i don't know if i texted you this or not i think i did i think i messaged you on instagram i'm going back to work soon i got like a return to work date and everything oh wow so uh yeah i'm feeling better which is good but uh the downside is is that now it's like ticking clock right like all the creative shit that i planned on doing during this time off i now have like three weeks to do so I'm kind of like, okay, <laughs> if I'm going to write something, if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to film something, I got three weeks, which is just enough time to make it happen. But uh, it's not a whole lot of slack in the room. So I'm kind of in creative overdrive right now. So wow. well, yeah, sure. my DMs are open for collabs, people. So fucking slide in and, and start pitching me ideas. I am trying to pay off all of my debt in the next six months. So I'm very busy with that. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So I, so if you guys didn't notice and you didn't listen to last week's episode, there's new merch uh, up on the merch shop. And you should totally go and <laughs> check it out and buy it so that I can get out of debt. That'd be wonderful. Um, <laughs> but what did I tell you about that ATM? <sighs> i mean i gotta have buyers first I, I don't really have buyers i got a bunch of people that want shit for free all the time and that's a problem. Oh, fuck that um, so well right exactly yeah so i mean we'll see anyway um no that was pretty much my weekend i, I mean i was pretty much um you know it was it was fun i had never been to a horror convention before believe it or not um i just had never went it is very fucking expensive um yeah but you know some of the um holes within myself that i felt needed filled <laughs> emotionally um were, were, were definitely filled and uh, uh i think that 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 was worth the money even though again like i said i'm trying to pay off my debt so it's probably a very bad decision to go and just drop 200 dollars on taking pictures with these people but um you know they they deserve it they all deserve it so you know they, they deserve my money um right. you know there's that so that, that was me that was my weekend uh that's all i really uh have this week um you know pato mentioned that we you know did the horror basement and beyond um which you know i did an episode um just with uh you know jim jam uh a couple months back so go check out that episode and also go check out the official um horror basement and beyond episode with both myself and pato like i mentioned we don't really do a lot of things together um which is strange but i don't know maybe people should ask more if we should do things together because i think it, it went well we do this together every week, and it, it goes all right. I think. I don't know. I was. I accidentally took an edible, like too much of an edible yesterday. <laughs> I was really fucking stoned that, for that. <laughs> that but I think I did okay. I don't get. I didn't get too weird. But uh, 
a rambly <laughs> but i was fucking higher than bird pussy holy shit and then i drank i drank coffee like like while i was doing it to kind of like perk me up and like yeah. focus me and i was just like blah, 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 blah. i think you did but, fine i don't think you could tell how high you were if you were really high yeah um but that was the conversation pat texted me he's like hey i just took a whole edible and i'm really high so i'll probably be really high tonight and i told him I said, that's okay. I just spoke to Lloyd Kaufman, and he said there needs to be more drugs in the world, so. <laughs> <laughs> I kept for, nothing against, nothing against the podcast, but just having Gary Con because I came home from Gary Con Sunday morning, and I kept fucking forgetting that we had that interview last night. Yeah, me too. And I had it, I had it in, I have two, unfortunately, the way my phone is set up, I have like two to-do list schedules on there. I had it on both. And I had it on both, and that's why I kept reminding me because I kept looking at it, seeing it. But it's like I would remember that we had the interview, and I would like make preparations and like set an alarm, and then within like an hour, I'd forget about it. And then, and me taking the edible happened during one of those windows where I forgot that we had the podcast, and then I was got super fucking stoned, and then I was like, <gasps> I got to talk to people I don't know in two hours, you know. And uh, it ended up working out okay. They were cool. Yeah, you know, they, they had accents, which was entertaining to me. Like I was like, "Oh, I just like to listen to them," you know. I'm from Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee, Tennessee. <laughs> Lord, I really feel so stressed. <laughs> anyway. A little no, rest of development for you guys. Listen, if you can't be high and do a podcast, Pat, you're in the wrong fucking business. <laughs> Yeah, um, right <laughs> so you're right now uh no but actually for the most part i do i do i do this sober um because i don't we record on mondays and i don't usually get off work and, and get fucking lit but you know that's just right. me but you know you should be able to do it i used to drink when i did it i, I, I didn't drink like a, a beer or something but I, and i'd probably get high sometimes uh back when it was me and ivy i know we would get high every time together and do it um but <laughs> anyway um you know so it was fine it was a good show definitely go check that out um also there uh, you know over the weekend a new episode of monster radio came out uh where we talked about the kentucky goblin so um go check out monster radio which is still only exclusively on youtube because i'm a piece of shit and haven't done what i need to do to get it uploaded everywhere else yet um but i will um, but we, of course, we did the Kentucky Goblins over here on, on our podcast um, not too long ago. You guys seem to really like that episode. If you want to hear me talk about it again or, or more with a different person, Monster Radio. Go check it out. Um, and then uh, March Madness is coming to a close uh, with on uh, CryptoCasters. They are doing their final round this Thursday, um, which you guys might be a little too late, depending on when you listen to this. But um, that's okay. Uh, I don't remember the region. I think it's it's North. It's Kinsey, and uh, New England, and, basically. Uh, yeah, that crowd, Northeast. Okay, that's what I thought. So I, I'm definitely gonna check that out, and you guys should probably uh, check that out as well. Please, everybody listening to the show, get the fuck on Clubhouse, please. I don't. I have no stock in that company. They are not. Uh, they're not a paid. We're not paid spokesmen yet. Spokeswomen, but. Uh, yeah, check out Clubhouse. Get more people on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is such an awesome interactive way to do this. It's it's this, but it's this with and you can join in on the conversation. Yes. And it's so much fun and it's already got a good healthy base of like podcasters. Like it, it turns into like a podcaster orgy when everyone's on there cuz everyone on like I mean there's like randos in the room and stuff like that, but like for the most part, everyone up there has their own podcast. So they're all conversationalists right. by trade. And uh, it's great. I absolutely love it. I love I love Clubhouse. I cannot sing its praises enough. And I have yeah. absolutely no reason to do that outside of just pure 100% honesty. And even like, e even if you're not coming on and there's nothing scheduled in the Cryptozoology Club, which of course you can, you can start a room there um, once you join the Cryptozoology Club on Clubhouse. But even if there's not anything, there's always fucking something to get on Clubhouse and talk about. Like, you can start oh. your own shit and talk about whatever you want. Did, did did Will Smith slap the shit out of Chris Rock? You can get on Clubhouse and talk to everybody about it right then and there. It's or cool. listen to other people talk about it. That's what yeah. I like to do. I like to fold laundry and listen to, like, Wiccans talk about fucking what, Wiccan shit. You know what I mean? And it's just something to do for 20 minutes is listen to people talk about stuff, you know? instead of just listening to music or yeah it's it's listen to a podcast but what's nice is that you know it's it's very it's kind of random the stuff that i pick up on and listen to and then if i want to join in the conversation and actually interact with it you can if you're listening yeah, to serial yeah. if you're listening to us you know you can't always interact right away 
Right. And uh, with with Clubhouse, you can. If you have a question, you can raise your hand and ask that question. And people are more than happy to interact with you because it's still kind of in its infancy. So there's not a shit ton of people on there. Um, but once again, yeah, this Thursday would be a great point entry point. You're gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna be doing uh, this March Madness thing, and uh, I mean, I'll be there, I'm sure, and a yep. lot of other people will. So yeah, well, we'll be there, and I mean, it, it is cool. One time I, I popped into a room about whether or not mushrooms are aliens. That was really cool. Um, that was great yeah. discussion. Yeah. Oh yeah. It just depends. I've t- you can talk to different celebrities are on there, just chilling out in the rooms, and you can get on there and ask them questions. And I've started to notice that too. That there is more of a celebrity presence on there. It's yeah. not. It's not as widespread as like say Twitter or Instagram. But um, every once in a while, I'll be like, oh my god, is that person really doing this? And it's it's them. You know, it is them. And I I got on there one time, and there was like some. Ro- I'm just scrolling through the rooms, and the one was like how to make the perfect pizza or something. It was like national pizza day. And I get on there and there's like a celebrity chef. And then they immediately invite me up to be a speaker. And it was so fucking wholesome when all of our friends on clubhouse, because it'll tell you when like your friends with somebody and they're speaking in a room, <laughs> like everybody gets on there <laughs> to listen to me talk about making fucking pizza. <laughs> I thought that was great. But anyway, um, yeah, clubhouse is great. Join it. Um, you can you can find it actually it's it's posted under my link tree my clubhouse is um just go you know it's under in the description down there under my link tree go find it um I'll you can find it. me through hers so just yeah I, i'm not gonna update my link tree to include mine because i'm lazy but yeah lazy. follow her and then you can follow me <laughs> anyway i don't really have any news this week there was really nothing big that had happened um this week in uh, 40 and news so why don't we go ahead and just get into the topic let's do it good um so uh yeah so this week we're actually this was kind of a surprise to us um we were supposed to have a guest on and um i'm not going to shame this person but i'm going to shame them when they come on the show publicly and they know this so um (laughs) anyway um so pat and i had less than 24 hours to come up with a topic and uh we landed on mermaids i thought that would be really easy Mm -hmm. um pat what do you know about mermaids um more than I did 24 hours ago, I guess, is a good yeah. thing to say. Cool. Yeah, um, I will. Let, let's and let me just say to, to the guest because uh, hopefully they're listening because they said that they were a fan of the show or a listener of the show, I should say. Um, I did a lot of research for that guy, <laughs> and I was very excited to talk to him. Very, 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 very excited to talk to him. I listened to his other interviews on other shows in preparation for him coming on, uh, and I hope that I, I hope that he gets his shit straight and comes back and i say that lovingly because i was very excited to talk to him <laughs> very very excited to talk to him i i i was gonna i wanted the dude to be the criswell to my ed wood like 100 <laughs> percent and uh <laughs> i please come back on the show because i really wanted to talk to you hey, well really he's wanted... sick this week he lost his voice that's fine that's and, hey shit doth happen i mean i understand <laughs> that better than anybody but um god damn was i excited to talk to that dude seriously and uh now we're talking about fucking mermaids so let's do this um i didn't know we were talking about fucking mermaids but i'm sure we will talk about the logistics <laughs> of fucking mermaids yes there, there's there's some sexual tension with these things um yeah i think what uh what i kind of you know obviously we all know what mermaids are we're all familiar with the little mermaid we all kind of know yeah. what they how they exist in, in in pop culture and media and stuff what i thought was interesting was um the more i started to read into it the more i started to make all the connection with a lot of hp lovecraft and his work with the shadow over innsmouth and uh the the palestinian fish god dagon and kind of where this idea of human uh aquatic human hybrids comes in and how kind of a recurring theme it is in many different cultures yeah and in many different ways it's not it's not just confined to ariel you know what i mean and aquaman and shit like that like it's kind of one of the more common tropes of uh human relate like you know early human like religious culture like when we were trying to fucking create things and explain things and come up with a system of gods and stuff that uh this was one of the recurring themes yeah i um you know i I am very conflicted about mermaids because i agree with you um th- mermaids is one of the oldest uh legends that we have right 
it, it is pretty much universal across the board. Every single culture has some type of mermaid. And not just like ocean people that are, you know, that 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 sit on the ocean. Um, there's also river river mermaids and, and things mm-hmm. as well. Um, but you know, and and it doesn't make much sense, and I'll acknowledge that it doesn't make much sense, but I I don't think that mermaids exist. Um, but I don't know, maybe I need to reevaluate that, um, because there have been, you know, this has been a staple in, in human history for as long as there was human history. And, um, you know, I always say in everybody, I think kind of agrees that if, if we're going to make grand discoveries are going to be out in the ocean, right. um, you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, uh, I guess my big gripe with it is, is that it's supposed to be, you know, what, what makes a mermaid a mermaid, I, I think is kind of where, um, we should start there. I, I see a mermaid as, um, you know, an intelligent life, another form of hominid that is intelligent to our standards and that they can build kind of their own type of civilization. Maybe not with like houses and shit like that, but they can have some type of civilization, some type of society around themselves and how they, if, if they're out there, why haven't they spoken to us? That seems kind of odd, you know, in a world where, where we are trying to make contact actively with things that come from outer space, why wouldn't we try to make contact actively with things that live in the ocean? Um, you know, that doesn't really make much sense to me. So anyway, um, you know, going back to the basic concept, you know what a mermaid is? It's a half person, half fish. Is Aquaman is a mermaid? No, not necessarily. Um, I thought he could just talk to fish. Right, but I mean, as far as like a aquatic human underground civilization or something, um, I think that's one of one of the more endearing depictions of it. You know, does he have a mermaid tail? No, he's got legs. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, they all have legs. They're like you know, all the Aquaman have legs. <laughs> yeah, all the Atlanteans. They're Atlanteans. They're from Atlantis. Oh, oh I don't fucking yeah. know comic books. I'm not a nerd. I don't. <laughs> I'm only talking about mermaids on my weekly weird podcast, but I'm not a fucking nerd. Oh, um, real, totally off topic. I've been wanting to ask you this for literally a year and okay. a half. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I'm, just, I'm finally doing it now. The title of this podcast on Wednesdays, We Talk Weird. Is that a Mean Girls reference? It, it is both a Mean Girls reference and a John Keel reference. Okay. Because John Keel has the Wednesday phenomena where, um, you know, he took uh, 700 UFO sightings or I'm sorry. Yeah, it was UFO sightings. And he had uh, came up with that. Most UFO sightings happen on Wednesday. Um, Get so the fuck he, out of here. Yeah. And so he thought that um, I guess you weren't there. It's part of my presentation. Um, I talked about it at the Paranormal Expo. <laughs> But yeah, um, so he he had an idea called the Wednesday phenomenon that high strangest events mostly happen on Wednesday. Um, now, uh, I have looked into whether or not this is still a thing, but I have not tested the numbers. I would like to. Um, Tobias Whalen sent me a really good resource on on this, but I didn't do too much deep diving because it was just kind of in passing on Twitter. But um, somebody else did run the numbers on specifically UFO sightings and had come up with uh wednesday's not number one it's actually saturday but number two is wednesday um so john keel might not have been completely off it's just something that hasn't been i don't think it's been studied correctly because i would like to do all high strangeness phenomena i'd like to do all of it and see what how it stacks up but anyway so yes it is it is both a mean girls reference and also a a Fortean reference amazing and it's catchy as hell so it's the only thing that uh pops up when you google it Anyway, <laughs> back to mermaids. <laughs> um, so Atlantis was one was episode number three of this podcast. Um, so we kind of t- we did touch on mermaids a little bit there, uh, mer folk, I guess, um, because there's mermaids and and mermen, and I guess mer folk. I don't I don't know um, what their pronouns are. I'll ask them if we ever catch one. But um, you know, I I don't want to I don't want people to be upset when the title of this episode is mermaids. Anyway, so. I am going to uh, go back to basically history and kind of where these have come from. So people used to say that, um, you know, sailors and explorers and, you know, pirates, um, you know, used to see these very beautiful women off in a distance. And um, they've always had a really bad rep to them. Um, A a really popular version of that is, is the classic siren in what Greek mythology 
um, where they would lure sailors to their death. Basically, they would lure you in with their looks and their beautiful singing, and then they would drown the shit out of you. I don't know why exactly. Um, that really just depends on what uh, cultural um, group you're looking at for what their motives might have been. Um, but they've always been seen in, in a negative light. Now, what's interesting, though, is that this this was so widely known that mermaids existed that even people like blackbeard the pirate wouldn't go to certain areas this badass fucking pirate guy would not travel in certain areas because they were considered enchanted waters he was scared of them um also allegedly christopher columbus you know the white guy that claimed to have discovered america that really didn't um he also reported having a mermaid sighting him and his crew um so you know it's not like there aren't credible people or, or what we deem as credible i don't know do you consider christopher columbus credible i mean he did lie about discovering america but yeah but that's a weird that's a uh, a weird anecdote to fabricate why would you come up with that right you know what i mean right there's no reason to you already discovered what you thought is america you right. know why why be like oh there was mermaids there too and also there's you know mermaids, I mean? right <laughs> right i mean why not i don't know you know you've already fucking <laughs> killed off a whole people you might as well just make the story whatever you want <laughs> wink wink third grade history um <laughs> anyway uh i'll stop poking fun at that but no seriously i mean you know in all seriousness you know there do seem to be credible reports of this now Modern science says that these men were actually seeing manatees and didn't know what they were looking at. Yeah, that's that's very odd to to make have that be your explanation. You Isn't know I mean? that weird? Have you ever seen yeah. a manatee? I'm sure you have. Yeah, and they're in zoos and shit. You know what I mean? They look like sea lions. Yeah. So uh, keeping with the manatee thing, um, in Celtic and Norse mythology, they have the selkies, and those are. Uh, <sighs> They're basically mer people that turn into seals, and uh, if you capture their seal skin once it's shed, you can kind of control them, and and uh, you know it, it's part of like their folklore and stuff. But what's interesting is that I don't know what it is about that specific type of creature, um, the manatee, you know, which kind of look like sea lions, like where they feel that these things are connected to humans. Um, yeah, you know it's kind of interesting because like they, when they say that mermaids in general are misidentified, what, what there's nothing in the ocean that looks like a human. Like there's there's definitely like seafaring mammals, which in and of itself is kind of interesting to like try to wrap your head around. You know what I mean? That there would be mammals that would live underwater. Like why do you, like not to turn into a fucking stoner like on the couch in somebody's garage while the doors are playing in the background but like why are there dolphins like that's fucking nuts you know yeah and dolphins are crazy like, can you imagine being that intelligent yet somehow being this like fish thing that like has to breathe air but lives in the water like why does that happen you know and then they rape everything too you know which yeah, they do, yeah, they do. I, I know that that's why i said it you know it's like or, or or whales whales are some of the biggest ocean like you know fairing creatures and they breathe oxygen but they get that yeah. big and we know that whales used to walk around on land too somehow they just kind of migrated to the ocean that's where they live now um so you know it, it's interesting enough to think that there are mammals that live in the water and we know that's a fact so evolution has carried us that far in what we can see but to say that there's humanoid mammals that kind of are are in the ocean like i don't think that's n not that far of a stretch and the fact that we've there's been reports of it in the past i think maybe there was some kind of species or something and maybe they're in hiding or maybe they've died off or you know whatever but I don't see how they can take reports of mermaids and say that, oh, they were looking at sea lions or manatees. That seems like a little bit ridiculous to me. I think that if we look at what's the way that nature's kind of evolved, I think there's precedence there for mermaids possibly being in some way at some time more real than um, than what we have now. Well, we'll kind of get into, into that portion of it, um, you know, but just, I mean, going back to say that, you know, 
is is saying that these people are seeing manatees is that the equivalent of like swamp gas or weather balloons? right or jupiter yeah i mean maybe and w- because like a man manatees are fucking large and and they're, that's not what they're describing mm-hmm. they're describing you know these these teeny tiny attractive women with hair and everything and manatees don't have all that right they don't have breasts, you know. <laughs> they don't have, <laughs> you know, they don't look like that. Um, so, I mean, maybe the tail, sure. I, I suppose, yeah, they could see the tail flip up in the water, and maybe they put an assumption. But then you're assuming that the only time that these men um, sailing the seven seas ever saw this thing was just the tail end of it. Um, or, I, you know, I suppose if a manatee's head is sticking up out of the water and you're seeing it from the back, it, it is kind of humanoid shaped um but then you know there's the presence of hair also that's not there so why a woman why would they assume it's a woman and not a man i i would like to see more i think if you're gonna try to disprove mermaids you would get a lot further talking about the type of psychosis that a person could go through after being on the sea for like a year yeah i think that maybe there's there's something more to that explanation and, and that right. these people were just horny and nuts. You know what I mean? It could be. Like, do you, sure. I know that, uh, you know, kind of when we first met, I was wearing that Pegboy shirt and you were like, oh, Pegboy. And I was like, no, it's a band. But like, you know, you know what that <laughs> comes from, right? It's like Cabin Boys. Like, that's what that, it's a, it's a, it's a very popular Chicago punk band. But what they got their title from, the, the term Pegboy referred to, uh, you know a human being like a slave or like just somebody that was i don't know whatever um on a pirate ship or on a on a boat that their job was to sit on a chair with a little peg on the butt to like keep their butthole loose so that they could be enjoyed by the captain and crew and the phrase cabin boy that's usually what it refers to is a boy that was kept in the in the cabin in the captain's cabin for his you know use so like when you had sailors on the seas for a long time like they they would miss women <laughs> and and yeah. that could potentially lead to fucking getting so cumbrained that you think that a fucking sea lion is actually a, a broad but i mean that's so crazy though but i think if you could back that up with with psychological evidence of people being that frantic and horny and delusional then I think maybe you have an argument there, you know. Sure. I could see, I could sure. see that maybe, you know. But I still like to think that there's some kind of weird evolutionary offshoot. And so, I mean, it kind of um, culminated in not culminated, but but again, the, the mermaid idea has been around for a very long time. Um, as a matter of fact, um, you know, it ended up becoming a very big selling point for. Um, P.T. Barnum because in the 1840s uh, he claimed to have acquired a a mermaid and he was showing it around to places um, you know going taking it around places and people saw it and it was horrific it wasn't anything like uh, the stories And, and you know as a matter of fact I'm sorry that's where I wanted to start Christopher Columbus when he had his sighting of a mermaid he said it didn't look like people had described it wasn't beautiful it was fucking scary and it was, you know, monstrous and not anything you wanted to look at. So then P.T. Barnum comes around in the 1840s with his mermaid. Um, he says that it was caught off of the coast of Fiji by a Japanese fisherman, and that's who he bought it off of, um, hence calling it the Fiji mermaid. Um, and from there, he, he took this thing around and showed it everywhere. And um, this thing ended up, um, I believe it it eventually was lost in a fire but i think that it was originally lost in a fire and then he had made another one and it was lost in a fire well this mermaid this fiji mermaid ended up not being anything more but uh the top half of a monkey sewn to the bottom half of a fish whoa and uh yeah and uh you know we aren't uh surprised by this because pt barnum wasn't a very honest man i mean he made his 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 living off of freak shows and things like that, you know? So, um, you know, he, he, he sold stories is what he did. Um, but you know, you can actually purchase your own Fiji mermaid now. Um, they're very popular. My friend Cherish at the secret chambers house of oddities and artwork. She has one on display there. Um, you can Google it and you can see what a Fiji mermaid looks like. There's tons of them. 
Um, but they, that's what they are. They're just a taxidermy, um, uh, a taxidermy thing where, again, they take the top half of a small monkey and put it onto the bottom half of, of a fish and it looks like a mermaid. Um, <clears throat> they also discovered that um, other certain fish have you ever been to one of those aquariums where you walk through the tunnels, you know, you're underneath the yeah. fish swimming around? I sure have. Like there's sharks and shit around you, you know. Um, and if you notice some of those sharks and the stingrays and stuff, when they when they float by you and you look you're looking at the underneath of them, they kind of look like um a face. Um, as a matter of fact, the guitar fish is uh, another type of fish, and you guys can go ahead and Google that guy. Um he, he horrifyingly the bottom of him looks like a face and so a lot of people have tried to take guitar fish and kind of you know dress them up and taxidermy them up a little bit and say oh look it's a mermaid um we we see that a lot in cryptozoology actually the guitar fish or the stingrays or whatever um dressed up to look like mermaids because they do look like that um, but then again, the sailors and shit weren't swimming underneath these things most of the time. So they weren't seeing the bottom half of, of stingrays, you know. Um, so is that even a, a good explanation? I don't think so. But anyway, um, we had told a story, I think it was last week or maybe the week before during the news, that um, there is an alleged mermaid body that stays at a particular temple that scientists are now doing tests on to see what it really is. And it is most likely a Fiji mermaid. It's most likely just two two animals sewn together um, to make this thing. So uh, mermaids kind of became a, a popular thing again. Uh, Barnum brought back the mermaid lore for a while, um, and then it kind of disappeared back into obscurity. And then, um, you know, the 80s and 90s happened where you had a lot of mermaid-heavy um, media out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> And kind of brought it back again, you know. It, it it comes and goes, but but mermaids have been around for a very long time. Now, let's get back into the science of it. Um, there is a man, uh, a marine biologist by the name of Alistair Hardy, who ended up proposing the aquatic ape theory. And what he had theorized is that um, there are certain traits in some human beings that don't make sense for us to have evolved straight from some type of land dwelling creature. He thinks that it's possible that in evolution, you know, we split. Now there's been different versions of hu of, of, of hominid all throughout history. Homo sapiens are not the only one, um, you know, so we know that that, that exists. So anyway, um, what Mr. Hardy proposed, or I'm sorry, Dr. Hardy proposes is that um, some people went into the ocean and some people did not. And somewhere maybe there were certain offshoots that started to evolve to ocean dwelling people and then walked on the land. Now this marine biologist, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a cryptozoologist. He wasn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? He wasn't one of those people. Um, he was a marine biologist and just said, you know, it's kind of fucking weird that sometimes people have webbed feet and that doesn't make any sense. You know, um, he said, it's, it's kind of weird that we have certain traits that set us up for living in, in water um, but then they never really developed. That wasn't the only thing. There was a bunch of stuff to it. Um, it's, it is an interesting theory. No. Um, but he says... And like I said, there's plenty of mammals that did evolve into being ocean-dwelling creatures, even though they still breathe oxygen in their mammals. You know? So it, it why wouldn't something of a humanoid variety do the same? You know, why right. just whales I mean, and dolphins? Why not, why not humans at some point? And some, somewhere over, over, you know the millennia i don't know yeah yeah i mean you know it's it's i suppose it's a possibility um i mean i you know again i think that maybe if 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 there was some type of ocean dwelling hominid that was out there um you know i just don't think i mean i don't know i think that we would have made contact with them by now or they would have tried to contact us um, and then they haven't. But then we have things like Lake Erie has, has uh, you know, a lake monster, Bessie. And for a long time, I grew up thinking that Bessie was just a Nessie knockoff. Um, the name is, but it's not. It's actually more of like a creature from the Black Lagoon type of thing. Right. It's like a, it's like a humanoid. And, um, you know, that's interesting. There's also, I think today, or maybe tomorrow, one of these days is the anniversary of the uh, Charles Mills Lake Monster in Ohio. And it, it was like a humanoid that came out of the lake and uh, 
scared some shit out of some kids and then went back i guess um so it's not like we don't have other tellings of these type of aquatic people um you know these 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 aquatic hominid things living out there but i don't know um back in 2013 animal planet made a really bad decision that still haunts me to this day and they put out this mockumentary about mermaids and uh it's called mermaids the body found and i'm sure if you're listening to the show you've probably watched it um and it is very annoying because a lot of people take this as evidence because they they made this documentary saying that the um some big uh you know letter organization that works for the government or whatever is trying to cover up the existence of mermaids and that we have proof that mermaids exist and here's all this proof and it i mean it came complete with uh full cgi footage um you know doctored photographs everybody in it was an actor but they were allegedly a doctor but remote biologist or whatever worked for the government it was a good fake i'll give you that and then they actually made a sequel to it called uh, mermaids the new evidence which had even more and even while doing research for the show i would come across you know i was looking for like photographic evidence or you know videos or anything and the only things that i could find is from that stupid ass <laughs> mockumentary <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see them resurface every so often and you'll see people say oh my god look there's this is footage of a mermaid it's not it's just cgi um but you know the the extreme lack of evidence and the fact that it is strictly anecdotally based for me um hurts but then again i believe in a lot of other things that have absolutely no other evidence besides someone told me about them mm -hmm. so I don't know. I mean, that uh, well, you know, there's, is a struggle. For there's lots of like underground structures that are found off the coast of America uh, and other places around the world too that um, people still really don't know what to make of. You know, there's there's stuff off the coast of Florida. There's stuff off the coast of California. Um, some of them look kind of like temples or just like rudimentary structures. And one theory is that they're from a time when sea levels were different. You know, sea levels were lower, and that was coastland that's now underwater. Um, or potentially it was built by an underground, an underwater civilization. You know, uh, they could be extinct. They could have died off, you know, um, or they could be in hiding. Or I, I don't necessarily think that, like, if they, if they do exist, that their existence is being hidden by the government. You know, although that that's an interesting concept is that, you know, once that all this stuff exists and at some point in our country's development we started hiding things right uh you know giant skulls found in the grand canyon and and you know crashed flying saucers and all this stuff and it just kind of became our policy just to hide shit right <laughs> and now we're at the point where like it's a full-time job keeping all these plates spinning to hide all this stuff from the rest of the world right because we we made the decision long ago just to start lying and once you start lying it's really hard to stop you know so maybe that's where we're at i mean that wouldn't completely surprise me you know that w at some point we found out about mermaids we found out that they have underground fucking temples and 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 condos you know off the coast of the fucking florida keys or whatever <laughs> you know and we just we hit it and we hit it, and we kept hiding it and denying it and saying, no, that's it. Yeah. And, and that's where we're at now. I don't know. Um, but there's something about it. There's just something about when you talk about the vastness of the ocean and you talk about how, how little about it we know. And, you know, if you can talk about sea creatures and you could talk about giant, you know, the megalodon or giant squids or all this stuff or, you know, do UFOs actually come from underwater and all this stuff, you know, how wh why is it so hard to imagine that there's an underground or at some point there was an underground an underwater race you know um hmm. i don't know it it doesn't sound for whatever reason I, I know when you say it and you kind of pick it apart it starts to feel like bullshit but there's something about it that doesn't sound that far-fetched to me for some reason you know, they like to say the truth has a special ring to it. People always know the truth when they hear it. Some people always know the truth when they hear it. And I'd like to think that there's, for whatever reason, there's something to this on some level. 
maybe it's in our past maybe it's maybe it's it's time has come and gone and you know the columbus types and the and the seafaring types were were catching glimpses of it you know maybe uh because if you look at like the the boats that we have now that the ocean liners that go across you know the pacific and atlantic like there's they're not seeing stuff you think those guys are looking over the edge and seeing fucking mermaids like no but in columbus's day with those kind of craft it was more likely that they would see something you know um because they're looking more because <laughs> there's no tv you know yeah there's no iPhone. so they're looking yeah. over the edge and they have a they have a stronger connection to the ocean and now it's just big ocean freight liners with you know shipping cars back and forth and shit you know um sure. i don't know i give it a maybe I mean, you know, so we had when we had um did the Atlantis episode, we kind of, you know, started with that also of, of what the definition of Atlantis would be. Um, and because that was kind of hard because we do discover uh, lost civilizations all the time in the ocean, mm-hmm. all the time. And uh, so have we then discovered Atlantis? Um, I, I don't I guess I don't think so. Do you think that Atlantis is now a, is right now to this day a happening society where fish people live or do you think that it was once a city that was so advanced that God struck it down or whatever it was that happened? And, uh, <laughs> you know, now it's gone forever. I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, again, I just I need more. I need more than um, a couple of sea stories from from old sailors and pirates uh, to, to buy this theory. I mean, you know, I was in a Facebook group one time and a guy was, uh, very pissed off that people were saying that mermaids didn't exist because he's seen them and he was very adamant. Now, was he insane? Probably he was just insane. Yeah. Uh, we, we see that. A lot. <laughs> yeah. There's crazy people on Facebook <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, so, was he crazy? It could have been, but or maybe he's not crazy. He's just reactive because he has frustratedly tried to tell people that he's seen mermaids and nobody ever believed him. You know, we're also probably this is one of those topics where, like, you know, I mean, some people on <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna fucking do this. Some people oh on God. Twitter like to say that like all white people should refrain from making comments about the Will Smith Chris Rock thing because we're not black men, we're not black women. We have no idea what the fuck we're talking about, so keep all their names out your mouth, right? Oh. And I, I don't know if I necessarily believe in that, but in this case, I will say we are probably the last two uh, 14 th- enthusiasts that should be talking about mer people because we live in the Midwest, in the Midwest. right? <laughs> like, you know, like I think if you were to talk to like coastal people about it, they might have a little bit more insight or intuitiveness about it, you know? Because they live, I've never even, I've never even fucking like touched the ocean before. Seriously, I've seen it, I guess, kind of, but like I've never, I've never like swam off the coast of California or. Me neither, and I probably never will because there might be fucking mermaids out I, there. I'm, so. a, I'm personally afraid of jellyfish, like that's my whole thing. But uh, oh yeah, you know, because they'll sting you. You don't want to get peed on. I do, but I can do that separately without the. Sting? I don't need to do that at the beach. I can do that in the hotel room <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Dude, I had a girl piss on me once. Could you not? <laughs> Just because I wanted to see her with her shirt off. I had no, and she was really into peeing. I had no intention of getting pissed on. Did had no. It was, I had no dog in that fight. But I was like, she's gonna fucking disrobe to do it, and I really want to see them titties. So, that's all it took. I got peed on. Wait, and she was like, she told you, she's like, oh, I'll get naked for you, but I have to pee on you first. No, I was just like, I'll let you do whatever the fuck you want to do. It just would it just just put me in the game, coach. Get me one step fucking closer to that, and I went along. I've never peed on I anybody yet. I don't want to. Oh, that's a big money maker. That's why they cut ca- peeing oh, on people. Oh yeah, but then you got to do it in person, and people get scary. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't do it. It's not like shaking a stranger's hand. I mean, you want to, you know, make sure that there's a, a dog man hunter in the other room with a nine millimeter. But like, sure, you know, yeah, true. <laughs> count that's count true. the money, that's making true. sure no one gets roughed up without paying for it first. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I don't know how we got there. P- people think we're a couple. Is that, is that what I heard in the beginning of this episode? People think that we're a thing. I, so, like, that was, part of that was hyperbole, because it was getting me to where oh, I needed okay. to get to, to be like, you know. Sure. But um, I will say that the more listeners that contact me, the more um, the more people kind of 
not they contact me because of you, but it's it's very weird sometimes the way you get brought up in in what context. And I think we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about that okay. in the Patreon exclusive after show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> it comes okay, up sometimes. Right, I will right. say that it's 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 a non-zero amount. I'm not saying it's every time, and I'm not saying it's once. But it, it, there's definitely mm-hmm. multiple sources. But like, it's just interesting, and it reminds me of that part is true. It it definitely gives me the vibe of when I was younger, and I thought Pat Sajak and Vanna White were like a couple because they were on Real Fortune together. We're gonna talk about it in a couple of minutes <laughs> once we end the show, but. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about it uh, for people on Patreon for uh, uh, the uh, fair price of $1,000. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, back to uh, mermaids <laughs> and not pissing on right. people, unless we want to talk more about that. Um, no, um, you're right. Um, but we do have, Indiana had the uh, the murd, the murd, the mud mermaids, <laughs> the murd maids. Uh, they had the mud mermaids, which was a, uh, you know, we had a, adam from pine barons institute on and he does a lot of the um old-timey newspaper uh-huh. stuff it was a part of the old-timey newspaper thing um where two creatures were allegedly found on the ohio river um in indiana and they were very they had very human-like features but nothing ever came out of it ever again <laughs> so i don't know um so like that's what i'm saying you know these things are also reported in rivers and we you and i both have a great lake of our own yeah um, well indiana too like especially like i know fort wayne is like it's a fort that was built on three rivers one of them i think might have yeah. been the ohio river because it's so close to ohio that would make sense um that makes sense yeah yeah i mean anything that's seafaring could, could get caught in a river and then wind up somewhere it's not supposed to yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We t- we talked about that. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm not I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no. Well, you know, back in uh, I think it was 2008, 2009. I don't remember. Um, there was a story that had came out, and it was about a manatee that had been living in a body of fresh water, and it had been living there for so long, um, that it actually had algae growing on its back, and uh, that was kind of a big deal. That was a big deal for uh, cryptozoology because it it kind of you know gave a little credibility to whether or not sea monsters come in and out of the channels to the rivers mm-hmm. and go back into the ocean and things like that um because uh you i don't know if you've ever tried to take a saltwater fish and put it in a freshwater tank but you can't you know? well so it's funny you bring that up that actually was uh, a major point of the um a major point of the uh, creationist museum the noah's ark thing that we went to last summer because that was one of the things that they address is you know when the rains came it made everything fresh water and then salt water developed over time and blah 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 blah. there's there's a lot of seafaring creatures that exist in both and there's a that can yeah. exist in both straight up and there's a lot of creatures that can uh can can switch or that have switched over uh over like generations so the right. whole hard like salt water fresh water thing it's more of an issue for us than it is for a lot of fish so you know don't let that be the end all be all is like well if is it sea salt water is it fresh water can't be both eh, there's a lot of there's a lot of instances where things switch or can more or less survive in both not saying that it's universal for everything you're absolutely right if you were to go and grab a fish out of the fucking the ocean and then throw it in, in, in fresh water it might just fucking die you know you're gonna kill it right yeah. well i mean right it's not it's not impossible but it is improbable it doesn't happen a lot it's rare that it does but there are some that do use rivers and things like that to travel from one body of, of ocean to another um it doesn't it's not that it never happens because it does happen but it doesn't happen very often um so anyway that was just i mean so we could uh, my point was if they are seeing manatees they could see them um in the rivers too right. because they we, they've been but known that goes, to live that there. goes back to the whole is a manatee a reasonable facsimile of a fucking human being and it's not sure. you know i don't it's not I, I yeah so i don't i don't know why that whoever keeps bringing that up like whatever man it's science <laughs> science keeps bringing that up right, well. <laughs> but that's what they say i you know i don't know um you know i i can't i can't give you a, a hard yes or a hard no on uh on man or oh, i'm sorry on mermaids i'm really very undecided on the topic again i would need 
some pretty hardcore evidence to go yes i believe in this i don't really care if they exist or not it's not one of those it's not like how i want to believe nessie's a plesiosaur i want to believe that i want to believe that pat it's like how you want to believe that the frogmen are are frog people are actual frog people um and and i want you to be able to believe that um mermaids i don't i don't really care if they exist or not that would bother me any if they do. That's cool if they do. Um, but I'm not going to go jump on a boat and dedicate my life to the research. And eh, there's other things to do. There's other fish to fry that are not mermaids that probably taste better. What do you think a mermaid would, ta- uh, would taste like? Fish. Do you think it would taste like fish or do you think it would taste like pork? Like, like a human? long pork? Uh, I, yeah. I, it depends on which side you're eating. I don't know. <laughs> like if you're, if you're eating some, some mermaid, mermaid ass. Ribs. You know? Oh, ribs? Yeah, that's what eggs are course that's what we're going for that would be pork but if you're eating mermaid ass, ass right. because that's the fish portion portion of it i don't know then what it tastes like fish you know we didn't talk about that either about how does mermaid sex work how do you think if you were to have sex with a mermaid how do you think that it would oh work? i'm sure there are scaly fucking vaginas that i mean it, pussies are already oh. weird in the first place and now you're <laughs> covering it in green scales and a fucking flap there's actually uh i think it's a Stuart gordon movie it might be uh called dagon which is what i brought it up at the beginning of the show the uh the uh fish god from like the philistines back in the day and um it appears in a lot of uh, it's one of the oldest gods it's the father of ball um kind of like the second the firstborn to uh it's not they don't call him yahweh but it's like l which is like the the um the non uh judaic religions that have like the supreme it's not it's not a monotheistic religion because they have a bunch of other ones but like the supreme god they call l and the, their their firstborn is dagon and then the other gods kind of offshoot from them and uh which you would know if you read the Bible. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of, a, um, so that's an old school God. Lovecraft incorporates him in a lot of his work, especially the stuff that has to do with like new England and Innsmouth and Miskatonic university and all that shit. And uh, there's a story called uh, shed over Innsmouth, which is about um, a guy that goes back to this town and uh, it's, it's populated with like human fish hybrids. Right. And they're kind of more depicted as like, frog people or more like creature from the back black lagoon than little mermaids but they are mer people i guess you would say and uh stuart gordon made a horror movie about it and it was called dagon and uh in it there's a scene where a guy fucks a mermaid and um it's pretty graphic it's not like i mean obviously they don't show the penises because you know Hollywood's weird like that. They'll show all the weird fish pussy that you can get your hands on, but they don't show dick for whatever reason. And but yeah, they kind of he has sex with the mer creature, and there's like a the, the mer man or the mer female. Mer-may. Yeah, he gives it a baby, and, and oh. he kind of mounts it, and there's like a a slippery fishy gash that he fucking oh. puts himself in. Well, that <laughs> until part he... to me is. is is easier to understand than having sex with a merman well i think they would probably just have something that pre- emerges from between betwixt the scales and huh. it's probably has got like it, it hooks onto something and i don't know i don't want to i mean i could draw <laughs> we, we can save it for the patreon i can get real just i'm very creative if you so you're gonna draw if, if you want me to hypothesize merfolk how, genitalia? how you could get fucked by a mer person i could you know He's gonna set the tri. He's gonna set the trident on the table next to you, and you're gonna feel strong hands on your shoulders and fucking push you down on the rough wood. You feel your nipples rub against the rough wood. The, the fucking the, the sea shanty shack. And oh fucking, god, <laughs> the sea shanty shack. There's, like, there's just like a <laughs> sound as like his scales part, and oh, the thing comes out and it go, goes in, and then you get knotted or something. I don't know. Oh, I mean, you want to keep going? I'll, I'll, we can do this. I don't like any of this. It's <laughs> well, very don't unsexy. try to, like, I, you um, know, don't fuck mermen. I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't understand the appeal to, I mean, I just don't get it. To me, it all sounds very gross. I mean, you think, I guess when you think of a, a mermaid, you think, oh, boobies, like, at least. But then even, like, thinking of, like, a, a mermaid slit, 
uh, no. And then you think of the merman. Ah. Do you remember Zoolander when he said, I'm not a mermaid, I'm a, I'm a merman? I've never seen that movie. You've never seen Zoolander? No. Wow. You know what? You watch Zoolander and I'll watch Men Who Stare Goats. <laughs> I already that. watched Hellier. <laughs> and then had the Hellier people <laughs> yell at me on Twitter. Like, I've already <laughs> fucking done my part. At least when you watch <laughs> Men Who Stare at Goats and you're like, this movie sucks. George Clooney's not going to materialize on your Twitter feed, retweet you, and then fucking talk shit back. You know what? I'm going to talk shit to George Clooney just, <laughs> <laughs> just to see if he says He won't. Um, <laughs> he won't. No, you're right. He probably won't. No, um, anyway. Also, um, have you ever seen um, Guinea Pig 3, Mer- uh, Mermaid in a Manhole? I've never seen the first two, nor the third one. You, you've never seen the Guinea Pig movies? I mean, you know what they are? No, but it, I feel like we've had this conversation before. What are the Guinea Pig movies? The guinea pig movies are like, um, they're, well, Charlie Sheen got really fucking mad because he thought number two was real and he like went on a campaign and like got the FBI involved to like get these movies taken away. Anyway, the first movie is just about some, a group of guys torturing some woman to death. And then the second movie is about a guy who tortures a woman to death and (laughs) except he's like injected her with like a drug to where like she can't feel anything. So she's alive the whole time. It's weird. Anyway, it's really gory, disturbing shit. You know, you know how I like my horror movies. Right. Really terrible. Um, but but number three ends up being weird because it like instead of like being just the usual torture part. I mean, it just straight up a shock for the sake of shock. It there's an actual story to it, and this guy is like hanging out in the sewers. I don't know why he's hanging out in the sewers, and he finds a fucking mermaid in the sewer. So then he takes it home and puts it in his bathtub. But like she's really really sick. And so he's, like, trying to, like, take care of her, and also he's a painter. So while, um, you know, she starts fucking oozing some disgusting things out of her body, and she's, like, bleeding everywhere and stuff. So he starts, like, using all of her, like, fluids and shit and starts, like, painting her with her fluids. It's weird and gross. (laughs) It's good, though. I I want to see this one more than the first two, because this one at least sounds like there's some, like bizarre cre- like you could tell there is there, there's i i like people that make movies that like make sense to them where like they're like yeah. this is a passion project like this sounds like this dude was trying to say some shit you know um yeah i i, I, oh, I would yeah. definitely check out guinea pig three i'll have to look it up it's i mean it's probably i'm sure you can get it for free somewhere on the internet um you know because that's kind of the only way you can watch these movies anymore but they're japanese movies um if that tells you anything but yeah. i mean it is it's 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 gory it's a lot of body horror like i said because she's got like these giant things that are like leaking like blisters and shit and he's, he's using that stuff to paint but it's not like i don't know you kind of get over it quickly and it's like throughout the whole movie she's just continuously deteriorating while he finishes his painting um so yeah it's lots of artsy symbolism shit but also like i said lots of body horror so if you're into that um type of thing Watch uh um Guinea Pig Three Mermaid in a Manhole I think, because <laughs> yeah having sex with a mermaid would probably be like the worst aspects of shower sex and pool sex combined. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? We're like everyone's just sore afterwards and like you don't really get it in and it's just kind of frustrating and like you're worried about falling the entire time or drowning. Well, because the mermaid has doesn't have legs, so like they can't do a lot. You know, you can't do a lot. You, there's not a lot of positions you can do. Um, you know what I mean? I'm so, used to doing all the work that's... anyway. Whatever, man. <laughs> just another day that ends in Y for Pedo. <laughs> oh man, that's very unfortunate for for you, Pedo. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, that's a good point, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, again, I can't give a hard yes or a hard no on mermaids. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that mermaids uh, are real? Do you believe in mermaids? Um, why or, or why not? Have you ever seen any good evidence of mermaids? Maybe I've just overlooked the good evidence. Pick up your cell phone right now. Seven seven three five nine weird. Perfect. See, you know how it goes. Um, and maybe we'll talk about it. Um, what is the uh, what's the password for this week, Pat? You got one? Ooh, guinea pig three. Because that way I'll remember guinea to watch it because I'll have people messaging me <laughs> guinea pig three all week. <laughs> It'll be like a daily reminder. Or you know what? Even better. Well, do people message you a lot? Just, yeah, some people do. All right. Yeah. Guinea pig three or men who stare at goats, depending on which one of us you're messaging. If you're messaging if, if yeah. you're messaging me, guinea pig three. If you're messaging Asher's men who stare at goats. Men who stare at goats. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds fair enough uh, for me. So. Okay, well, we'll see you guys back here next Wednesday.